Hey, Major League Baseball fans, you're going to love this. Today's episode is brought to you by the Sports Card Investor App. Welcome to the world of trading cards reimagined. Stay tuned later in the show for more information on this awesome new tool for collectors. You're going to want to check out the Sports Card Investor App. Thanks so much for making Locked On MLB your first listen as we're available on all your free podcasting catchers. Let's get the show started. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, Locked On Diamondbacks Crossover, which will be titled Better Late Than Never. This show is being dropped on the 28th day of June, 2022. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. If you see my lower third right there, you know you can call me Sully right over there. If you see where I'm pointing to there, that's Miller Thomas. He's the host of Locked on Diamondbacks. Normally, we do this crossover on a Monday. Fate and travel plans <laughs> yep. forced us to do this on a Tuesday. And if you're probably listening to it on Wednesday morning. Confusing? Maybe it is. But we're going to be looking at the still confusing suspensions that were handed out to the Angels and the Mariners after a very spirited fight took out which probably began with the plunking of Mike Trout the day before. Mm -hmm. Maybe it runs deeper. Here's the thing about your pal, Sully. I really don't care about fights. I don't. I don't think it shows masculinity. I don't think it shows toughness. And I think it's really stupid. But guess what? It's the Angels versus the Mariners. And they both are non-contenders this year, which is really sad. We're going to be taking a look also at the top four World Ooh. Series contenders, as we're wrapping up the month of June. Guess what? We only have a few days left in June. You can't say, ah, it's early. It's going to be July before this week is done. We're going to be looking at the top four World Series contenders and the top four MVP contenders in each league. And do you want to tackle the Cy Young Award work on it, too? Uh, sure. Uh, Time permitted. Whatever Time you want. permitted. Um, I just realized something. Uh, you can hear me just fine, right? Yes, I can hear you fine. I just realized that my headphones were not plugged in. Oh. Oh. But do you know what? Guess what? Like a nice homemade cookie. <laughs> it's maybe a little rough around the edges, but they're plugged in right now. Boom. It's a locked over crossover. Hey, Miller Thomas, tell people where people can follow you. Hey, you can follow me on my personal account at Creator Thomas Twenty Four, or if you just go in that little search bar, Twitter, Instagram, type in like, type in Locked On Diamondbacks. I'm sure you can find the podcast handle. Yeah, we only have smart listeners on this show. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm going to address something. I'm doing a, a a bit of a mailbag episode coming up. I, I do want to address one of the uh, uh, comments that I got on uh, uh, one of my listeners said to me on the podcast uh basically saying why don't i start each show with a recap of the previous night's games and the highlights and then bring on the guest and everything like that um there's a reason for it i would love to format the show like that i would love to i'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit here your pal sully has another job oh that i have to wake up early in the morning to get to and if I stay up to follow all of the California and West Coast games and then record an opening and then edit it and then put it together, your pal Sully's not getting to bed until after midnight. And then I'm going to be staggering into my job, of which I have to be physically in the classroom be well before 8 a.m. So you kind of do the math there. If we sell some more Built Bars, some more mm -hmm. Blue Nile, maybe this could be your pal Sully's full-time job. The hey. fact of the matter is, well, um, I don't always record these. Sometimes I record them ahead of time. Sometimes I record two ahead of time. Come look, look at There's no way I can record a show. But I'm going to go out of my way to give you five episodes a week. It's just not always recorded that day. Also, and this is another thing, um. I kind of would like some of these episodes to survive longer than the milk I just bought at Trader Joe's. So if you're listening to past episodes of a show and I'm recapping what happened between the Dodgers and the Rockies and you're listening to it weeks from now, I kind of like to have some of our conversation be 
a little more evergreen. Not always, but sometimes. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's my response. I would love to format it like that if this was my full-time job. Or more likely, I would do a scoreboard show, post that, and then as a bonus every morning, and then do the normal show. Maybe I'll go ahead and do something like that later on. But right now, you're stuck with me five days a week. You know what we need, Sully? You know NFL Red Zone? We need like Sully Red Zone, which is you watching all the games all at one time. I think that's yeah. what people want. Yeah, that also be Sully red eyes during my days in my classroom in the morning. But we'll see. Well, maybe we'll make some adjustments. Okay, let's. Uh, speaking of adjustments and th- speaking of uh, people being called out, we had ourselves a uh, let's call it a major brawl. Mm-hmm. You know, I was. I don't know if you're familiar with the film The Naked Gun, uh, the great really? comedy. The comedy that came out in the in the '80s based upon the TV show Police Squad, Leslie Nielsen. Um, O.J. Simpson's in it. He, he's an actor Ooh. with no with no baggage. Um, the final half hour of the movie inexplicably takes place during an Angels-Mariners game uh, that includes Reggie Jackson playing Reggie Jackson, being hypnotized to assassinate Queen Elizabeth II as he's walking across the field saying, I must kill the queen. Trust me, it's a funny movie of which the last half hour of the film is just baseball jokes. It's inexplicable. I love the naked gun. And it's the game in the game within the film is between the Angels and the Mariners, which was a weird in joke for 1988 because they were talking about, you know, how important this game is for these two teams, as both of those teams were like practically in last place at the time. And um, in the film, there's a gigantic fight bench clearing brawl that takes place between the two where they're breaking out chairs. There's a a tiger runs through the field. And all I could do when I saw the clips of the angels and Mariners brawling was think of the naked gun. I'm going to post on locked on MLB on their, on our Twitter feed. I'm going to post the clip of the big fight from the naked gun because it was ridiculous like that to the point where one of the players took a box full of <laughs> gum and sunflower seeds and heaved it across the field. It was a big pile of stupid is what it was. Yeah, you might have to take like the – from that brawl in the Angels-Mariners game that happened, you know, last week, you might have to take those faces, like put Jesse Winker's face and put it on those guys in the naked gun. That would be a pretty funny oh, uh, thing yeah. to do for social media. We, we, yeah, we have the technology to do that. Let's just start, yeah. let's just start popping that in there. Yeah. Um, look at I hate brawls in baseball. I it, I think it's I hate beanball wars. I hate all that. I think it's all stupid. I think it's fake machismo. I hate fake machismo. Um, but this, if you like baseball fights, though, this one wasn't. You know, most baseball fights is everyone comes out, they stand around, like, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do?" And then they push them aside, and everyone goes back. And the and the players on the fringe are basically like are like talk like, "Hey, duh, what are you watching on Netflix these days?" But this was. Honest to goodness, you had, um, you had what's his name, um, the third Rendon. baseman. Uh, no, the third baseman, Rendon. Rendon yeah. throwing swings. He has a broken hand. Yeah, my man came and play games right now. He's gonna have to be suspended when he comes back off the injury list. He's not even allowed to sit on the bench. I think for the next seven games I after we did. And we saw the night before that uh, uh, Trout got, you know, uh, mm. he there was head hunting going on for Trout. Yeah. which I think is Bush League. Um, then we saw the Angels bring out a uh, an opener, basically a one-inning pitcher, to chuck at the first batter. Yeah. Everyone was warned. Everyone got it. And then, you know, things – and then, uh, uh, you know, Wance, I guess it was, mm-hmm. um, threw it Julio Rodriguez's head. And um, then, you know, Jesse Winker – gets tossed and he does the double birds. He says, we're number one to the fans. I think he was doing, um, uh, here's a bit of, here's, here's a tough trivia question. And this is why I hate baseball brawls. Who won that game? Yeah, I, I exactly. Good question. Good question exactly. You got me there. Exactly. The angels won it two to one, which is not <clears throat> insignificant because the Mariners remember the Mariners. Mm-hmm. They're technically the same team that won 90 games last year. They contended until the final weekend of the season, acquired the defending American League Cy Young Award winner, 
and fooled me into thinking they're going to the playoffs this year. Um, they're an irrelevant team. Yep. When we list the four best uh, World Series contenders, I'm gonna, I haven't seen your four contenders. Uh, I'm going to guess that Seattle's not one of them. No, no team where Robbie Ray is going to be a contender for me. I'm sorry. Well, there you go. Oh, that's right. That's that. That's a that's mm-hmm. a sore subject with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so while they're playing, um, you know, they're playing who's who's got a bigger um, head than the <laughs> other. Um, the Mariners should be thinking about winning baseball games. The Mariners shouldn't be thinking about who they're throwing at. Or how much, uh, you know, what sort of machismo is happening here. And so the 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 dust settled. Phil Nevin, who obviously ordered his pitcher to throw at them, got 10 mm-hmm. games. Okay, congratulations. Your interim manager is out for 116th of the season. Jesse Winker, who charged the dugout and gave, told everyone we're number one, he got seven games. Anthony Redon, who was injured. Almost could have re-injured himself, got five games. Uh, Dom Chidi, the Angels pitching coach, Mariners shortstop J.P. Crawford, Angels pitcher uh, Wance, uh, Andrew Wance, Ryan Tapera of the Angels, Raciel Iglesias of the Angels, uh, the Ray Montgomery, the bench coach of the Angels, Bill Hasselman of the catching coach. I love that the Angels interpreter, Manny Del yeah. Campo, you, you're, you suspended the freaking interpreter. That was the name I was waiting for you to say, because that's the most wild part of the suspension. I was like, do it. I was like, how did what did the interpreter do during all this? Was he the I, I bet, I, No, I bet when people were trash talking, he was interpreting. <laughs> what he was saying was this. And then, uh, he called he said something about your mother, mama, you know. You're just instigating the whole time in just different languages. That's actually a pretty uh, funny example. If you were yeah, like, yeah, yeah like actually, you, you, you don't know what he said to you, but I, I'll tell you what he said to you. Um, and I think for Winker, I think the only reason he even got the seven games, I think it probably would have been five games if he didn't flip off the fans. I feel like the flipping yeah. off the fans added the two extra games because I feel like he probably should have got five games because if I'm Winker, like I did get hit. Like I don't mind his retaliation. I think Phil Nevin getting 10 games is valid because I think, like you said, throwing pitches pitches that you know the opposing batters i think it's just bush league and maybe scott service should be suspended too because if he made the call to throw at mike trout's head maybe he should be uh you know suspended too for the same reasons i'm not sure if that was the call but i don't agree ever with throwing at dudes with the baseball because it is wild you get someone in the head you could end careers like that so whenever someone whenever a manager who you know when you see the last at at the last minute the starter getting pulled for a reliever to to start the game then all of a sudden that guy's coming in and just throwing at julio rodriguez his um head thankfully he misses and then he hits jesse winker like on the leg like yeah the 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 manager of that game deserves to be suspended because you should never throw out opposing batters yeah and we just saw what happened with throwing it at um you know i mean not that it was done intentionally but Mm -hmm. you know we lost price harper for maybe the season yeah that's how is that good for baseball to lose the defending mvp and do it because you know now that was and and even Harper was screaming it back to the well, who was that was it Snell who was the Padres pitcher? yeah I think it was Snell that he was saying I know you didn't do it on purpose I know it mm-hmm. you know because it was it was a pitch that clearly got away but if you're really throwing at batters or, you know and you know you can hurt someone I'm sorry if you don't like that a team is beating you beat them. And it's not like they ever throw like their changeup. They're always throwing like their freaking heat. They're trying to throw it as hard as they can at these opposing batters, which is the most dangerous part. It's not like they're throwing, you know, a curveball just to let you know that I'm here and you can't be doing that. No, they're throwing the hundred mile an hour heat, and they're usually throwing out your head too. Also, the uh, Julio Rodriguez got suspended, and no one seems to be able to figure out why. Mm-hmm. No one can seem to figure out what he did. Maybe the interpreter interpreted something he said. I don't know, but like he, uh, for like, there's teams of sociologists and psychologists and forensics experts who are trying to figure out what Julio Rodriguez did to warrant a suspension. But look at, I think there's also, let's face it, a little bit of frustration going on here. The yeah. Angels went into June as a playoff team, and now you know they went on that massive losing streak. Joe Madden is going to LinkedIn.com looking for a new job that's not a sponsor for today's show. And the Mariners, who had images of a division title dancing in their head, are looking at up oh, the street. Like, barring a complete miracle, 
and barring an absolute collapse of Boston, Tampa Bay, and Toronto, what are the chances that all three of those teams are going to collapse? Go to bet online and try to bet on that. Not one of our, not one of our sponsors, but uh, not for today. But yeah, I think this was the definition of just like frustrations boiling over, you know. And uh, as far as baseball brawls go, though, I mean, this was one of the better ones we've seen in recent memory. Usually these, yeah. you know, the bench is clear and punches aren't thrown. Like J.P. Crawford was out there throwing punches. We mentioned Rendon. The man had his arms in a cast. He can't even use his left arm. He's still out there yeah. throwing punches. Like, so overall, like, it was a pretty good b- baseball brawl. We don't get That's too why I thought of it. And I, I'll show you. I'll send you the click. I know, Miller Thomas, you're only, you know, 14 years old. Um, yeah. that you would, uh, I will post the clip of the brawl of the naked gun, uh, just, and for fans of the naked gun, hopefully, uh, uh, you'll get what I'm getting at. I got to really, really update some of my references. I had, a uh, 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 Nash Walker from, uh, locked on, uh, twins the other day. And I made a reference to the 1980 comedy nine to five because the Yankees won nine to five. And in the eighties, one of the most popular comedies was a movie called nine to five. And I made a reference to it, and the look of complete confusion on his face uh, usually is only seen by a time traveler. So um, I got updates on my references.